Hey everybody. So here's uh, flight log number three for the Jupiter 2. First thing I'll say is if you don't have a lazy Susan around, uh, definitely pick one up. It's especially handy for this model. This is uh, like five bucks from the local grocery market, supermarket kind of place. Now here you can probably see I've started marking everything up to uh, know better where everything goes as far as the electronics. So I am uh, definitely have some initial lighting ideas for you to present, some uh, light boxes, some back rooms, and some styrene work as well. So uh, basically what I did here is I just marked things out. You recall that I cut a hole in the deck, the uh, flight deck, so we can put some wires down here. This is the shape of that hole. Uh, back room, the hallway, these will have some lights here. The airlock may have a light. I don't think it was very well lit though. The uh, computer wall goes here. This is where most of the lights and the fiber optics are going to go. We've got the uh, ladder shaft and the elevator that go right there. Each of those will need a light underneath to make it look like there's a room under there. There may be a couple of lights over here at the back room. The space pod I'm going to do something special about. I'll tell you about that in a minute, but we'll need at least one LED there. Then the freezer wall is pretty much a full third of the ship in this area. And uh, this is where most of the LEDs are going to go. To uh, And I will still be putting them on the uh, inner surface here, pointing up against the inside so they bounce back into the wall and give a fairly nice even reflection. So, uh... That's it for here. Let's take a look at the deck itself. I haven't done too many modifications. I'm definitely going to have a uh, photo etch session coming up and I'll show you all sorts of details on that as I go along. I'll record that whole process for you. So everything here snaps down really nice with all the magnets the way I've set them up. And let me make sure we got, we're in camera still. Alright, we're still framed pretty well there. So the first thing you notice is there's a whole bunch of extra stuff in the middle here. So let me uh, move some of this out of the way. And we'll set it up where it's supposed to be. None of this is glued down yet, so it kind of falls apart all over the place. Uh, first up, well, let's take a look at the space pot area. So I just started sticking a few pieces of styrene together to uh, make this shape. Basically I cut a square and then just kind of cut an angle there to uh, help out and make sure that it's not going to run against the inside of the wall. You'll also note that this wall is a little bit deeper by a few millimeters and that's because of this line here. So I put a magnet in the bottom already to uh, help get that sticking in place. So that line acts as a uh, ridge right there to hold it against the wall and this other side here fits really nice and tight so I'm gonna have one LED in the bottom there and whether well I suppose I pretty much have to do some kind of facsimile of the uh, space pod itself I think that opens straight into the inside of the space pod so maybe some quick fake controls or if I can get a screen grab and uh, just print that out on a piece of glossy paper that'll work too essentially because you're not really going to see it all that close. Would be nice if <clears throat> there was a miniature kit for the uh, space spot I could put in here, but essentially there isn't. And one of the interesting things I noticed when I was marking out the floor here is that this is the space pod door, but the space pod hatch is all the way over here. So that's just one of those things about uh, studio sets and scale models of everything. Next up, I cut out this piece of styrene here to act as a floor. I haven't attached that yet at all, but I glued these two popsicle sticks to the bottom of the deck to uh, act as supports. I'm very sure I'm going to cut this door out. In Season 3, the characters often, even though the stairway, the ladder is right here and the elevator is there, a lot of the characters coming from the second deck actually emerge through this door. So I'm sure that was just a script convenience, but... What I'll probably do is cut this door out, and it's often open as well, so you can see in there. So I've got this floor pretty much lined up and ready. I can't tell you the uh, thickness of this styrene right here. This is just scrap stuff I had laying around. And essentially all this is. Every little bit of styrene you see here is some scrap I had laying around. 
and uh, to prove that point you can see how crappy these pieces are here so it's real simple just start with one piece glue the edge stick them together I put a little baking soda in there to help uh, seal it up real nice and tight what I'll be doing here let's see if that's pretty much where it fits this wall goes along the stairway rungs right there the ladder rungs I'm sure I'm going to have to cut a new version of this. So uh, right now, there's a bit of a gap around there. And this used to stand really nicely. There we go. Oh, almost. And certainly once I get the floor sealed in there, it'll work out a lot better. And these walls here aren't exactly straight or precise to each other. So, But it was sitting pretty good earlier on. Well, this will, we'll call this good enough for the moment since it's going to be recut anyway. You can probably see there's a gap down there at the floor. And then over here, I put a gap in the wall as well because there are some wires here for LEDs. So I'm basically going to run those out here. And to make this look like it's a lit up room, I'll also be putting a couple LEDs. This needs a back wall as well, just like the space pod has one. So it'll just be a little uh, fall room, basically, or a miniature diorama inside all of this. So I'm going to attach the floor next at some point. This styrene itself is almost exactly the same thickness as the floor. So uh, once I glue that to the popsicle sticks there, just a little bit of putty along that edge, and everything should turn out real nice for that. And then I can get to work on really putting this room in there as well. The next bit of uh, styrene I started cutting, this probably looks a little odd until you actually put it on this wall here. This is basically going to be a light box for, well, let's do it this way. It'll be a light box for the computer wall essentially. So this is the front of the wall and it's got all these nice uh, straight lines which happened to fit a piece of styrene really well. So to start making this box, all I did was take one piece, line it up on the outside, glued another piece, and just started making the outside box. And then from there, my initial idea was to do something like uh, this situation where you cross cut the cardboard and you essentially make uh, an interior box. However, these lines are so close together and so thin that there was just really no way I could be that precise for all of them. So I'm kind of cheating. And in the show, <clears throat> there's the top. Usually this top set of rows, 18 boxes, 3 by 6, it's pretty much lit down like this. The second row, this top one, or the second bank, this top row is usually turned off or very dimly lit and then these are kinda lit going crossways so I got those going and right now these go pretty much up and down so I'm too into those and I got a few more to do and if I've got a scrap piece here basically I'm cutting uh, styrene until it happens to fit then This fits really nice and tight on the front here, or at least precise, maybe not tight. So once it's on, I'm fitting the styrene in and locking it into one of those grooves, setting it like that, and then if I have the glue handy, maybe I do, maybe I don't. just letting out the tiniest little drip of course that one's clogged 